Hey everybody, it's me Ryan here, or MNR Productions, and today we're going to be taking a look through every one of the summer 2018 LEGO Star Wars sets in full HD pictures. The last time I did a video like this was back in May, and we didn't even have images for a lot of these sets, so now we're finally taking a look at the HD images of all the sets. We'll be able to see the features on the back of the box, as well as get a great look at most of the minifigures. So, without further ado, if you guys do enjoy the video, please hit that like button, let me know you do enjoy the channel. And if you have any comments on any of these sets, leave them down in the comment section below. I'm curious what you guys think about this summer 2018 line. Is it overpriced? Is it priced fairly? Are the figures good? Are you looking forward to any of the sets? Do you wish they didn't make any of these sets? Let me know down in the comment section below. Anyway, we do need to go ahead and get started because this is going to be a long video if we're not careful. So we're going to go in set number order here. We're going to be starting out with the 75203 Hoth Medical Chamber with 255 pieces. This set is going to retail for 30 US dollars. It includes Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, and and a medical droid. This set honestly reminds me of some of the more recent Jurassic World sets where it's just kind of this open kind of scene where you have just some area to play with. It's kind of like a small section of a dollhouse, if you will. Anyway, it does have the back to tank or whatever for Luke to kind of sit in and float around in where he's damaged from episode five from being out in the cold on Hoth. It's got a lot of different medical things going on. You have the little bed built into the wall, which is pretty cool. And then you have a window where you can kind of see out into the world, which is pretty awesome. On the back side of one of the walls there, you can actually see a chair which is pretty cool as well. It's a pretty simple scene from obviously a very popular movie in Empire Strikes Back, but it's nothing really special. Other than the minifigures, you're not really getting something that's going to be awesome to play with. You, there really wasn't much going on in this scene in Episode 5 to begin with, but it's a scene LEGO really hasn't created yet, so they went ahead and made it, and I'm okay with that. I think this one's going to be pretty cool. For $30, it might be a little bit overpriced, so I would say wait for it to come down on sale maybe, but other than that, I'm pretty excited to get this one and add it to my Hoth collection. The next set on our list is the cheapest set of the wave. It's the 75214 Anakin's Jedi Starfighter, 247 pieces, and this one's actually only going to cost $20. However, my inside sources, aka myself, say that it's going to cost $16 at Walmart upon release, which is an incredible deal. So this set, if you're going to buy it, just buy it at Walmart on release. 16 bucks, I believe, is going to be the retail price at Walmart, although it'll be 20 elsewhere. It's really awesome. You get the new Clone Wars style Anakin Skywalker and a new R2-D2 minifigure. Very good. And then, of course, the Anakin's Jedi Starfighter, from 10 years ago wasn't quite this good looking. This one looks incredible. It's much closer to the design of the Obi-Wan's Jedi Starfighter that we got with the hyperdrive ring about a year ago. So that's really awesome to see. I love the design of it. It's going to have some pretty simple and standard features. Of course, you have the engines around the back. You have the stud shooters on top of the model. You have the landing gear underneath. There's not really too much Lego can do with this one, but of course you can throw Anakin in the cockpit and R2-D2 in front of there. Other than that though, it's a pretty simple design. Going to have stickers, of course, no printed pieces in this one, unfortunately, but it's a cool model nonetheless. Next up from Solo, a Star Wars story, we have the 75215 Cloud Rider Swoop Bikes with the minifigures of Tobias Beckett, Enfys Nest, and Weasel. So, of course, this is a pretty good slew of minifigures. I love the Enfys Nest minifigure. I think it's a pretty solid design. The Weasel figure is really neat, too. And then, of course, Tobias Beckett, who I actually thought was a pretty cool character in Solo, a Star Wars story. The Swoop Bikes are really awesome looking. I love the way the engines look, especially on the two of them. I think they did an amazing job. You have the one that kind of has the sidecar which is pretty dope and then you have the singular swoop bike so that's pretty awesome as well and you kind of recreate the scene from Solo A Star Wars Story with another couple of sets from the wave here which we'll get into but it does have the box with coaxium in it which is pretty neat as well so you can kind of recreate that section of it as well again the speeders look incredible lots of little details on them and for a $30 set 355 pieces you can't really go wrong I would recommend picking this one up on release day if you're interested arguably the most overpriced set of the wave is going to be the 75216 Snoke's Throne Room. This one for $60 excuse me, $70, 492 pieces. That one is just mind-boggling to me. You get some cool figures, though. Rey, Kylo Ren, Supreme Leader Snoke, and then, of course, two elite Praetorian Guards, which are going to be very coveted right off the bat, I think. Going to be some very popular minifigures, but other than that, there's not much value to this set. For $70, I mean, that's just crazy to me. I don't see the value here. They've added some little things in, but there's no big killer feature, in my opinion. You can have the elevator essentially spin out, 
out and have Rey be revealed behind the Praetorian guards. You can have Snoke's chair kind of lift off, but that doesn't really do anything because it doesn't even really happen in the movie. One cool thing you can do, though, is kind of pull Rey towards you, which is pretty neat. That's something that kind of makes sense from the movie, like where Snoke kind of lifts her up and pulls her towards him. You can actually have Snoke pull Rey towards him with a little lever in the back or whatever you want to call it. So that's pretty neat. This thing is covered in stickers, as you can tell, like around the base of Snoke's throne. You can see all the stickers. And then there's some stickers in the elevator section. There's no big red panel in the back, unfortunately. So that kind of takes away from what the set could have been as if they had included just a big piece of cloth to kind of go around the back. I don't know. It just, it looks really rough. The sides look weird. Where they have the odd support beams made with the sloped Lego bricks there just looks really awkward to me. I'm not a huge fan of the design of this set, but as a huge Lego Star Wars fan, of course, I'm going to get it for the minifigures and such, but I'm just not super excited about this one off the bat. For $70, I would say stay away from this one for the summer 2018. Wait for it to go on sale for 30, 40, 50 percent off maybe. Our next set is going to cost $90. It's the Imperial Convey X Transport set 75217. It's got Chewbacca, Han Solo, a couple of range troopers, and an Imperial Gunner. So we can see the minifigures are pretty solid in this set. I particularly like the range troopers, and I do like the face print on Han Solo and the exclusive kind of print on Chewbacca. Those are nice with the goggles. And then the Imperial Gunner is just kind of throwing minifigure in my opinion. There is kind of a cool little turret on top of the back of the Imperial Convey X Transport. While it's not accurate, it's just kind of cool that LEGO kind of threw that on there. I don't remember seeing that particularly in the movie. And it looks like you can actually move it around to the front of the ship too if you want just looking between the the two different pictures here that i'm looking at you can see the transport has a nice design of course you don't get both like the top and the bottom you also don't get any track for it to run on which kind of sucks it does have tread though so it will be able to like run along your floor i guess but it's kind of a shame that you don't get a, a track for it to run on that lego could have created it really kind of is a bummer it does have a pretty solid interior though you can see there's a ladder leading down to the coaxium inside of the transporter car and then you have the front pilot car or whatever you want to call it and you can see you can fit a pilot into the front there which is very nice got a little seat with tiles which I really prefer that over them having studs on the seats so that works really well and it's a solid design but maybe a tad bit overpriced for 622 pieces and $90 again this is kind of like Snoke's throne room in that I just don't see the value for $90 you're not getting too much playability out of this thing and it just really feels like Lego kind of cheaped out didn't include track didn't include a double-sided thing like it's it's so iconic the way that it's double sided onto the track and they just completely neglected to do anything with that which kind of sucks but that's the Imperial Convex Transport definitely another set for the minifigures and not really the design of the set itself speaking of the design of the set itself this new X-Wing is stellar this thing is a set made for the set not the minifigures although the minifigures are R2, Q2 Biggs Darklighter, R2-D2 and Luke Skywalker we've seen this set before in the last video I made of course but the X-Wing Starfighter here looks incredible 80 bucks for 730 pieces I think that's pretty fair the going rate for the the more recent force awakens x-wings have been 80 bucks so i'm fine with that you of course have the new rebel pilot helmets which some people do think look awkward and i kind of agree but that's just because we're so used to what we've had in the past the x-wing design itself includes landing gear as you would typically see you have some stud shooters on the side you have a very nice engine design you have something in the back of the center of the ship basically you push that forward and the wings fly open which is really awesome and then of course lastly you have some spring loaded missiles on the side and of course you can also load the minifigures and such into the ship which is pretty neat as well typical feature of an x-wing though anyway i like it it's a neat design i'm really glad we're getting an updated x-wing the last x-wing we got or at least the last original trilogy x-wing we got was in 2012 so this is a welcome upgrade with some new design features that we haven't seen yet in this type of x-wing so definitely looking forward to getting this one as soon as possible i think 80 bucks is a fair price although i'm sure you'll be able to find it on sale if you just wait a little bit so either way i think you're getting a good deal Completing our trio of Solo A Star Wars Story sets for the summer of 2018, we have the Imperial AT Hauler. This one's going to be $100 retail for 829 pieces, so you can see kind of the two bigger Han Solo sets might be overpriced for a lot of people. If you're just looking at the price per piece, but this one actually does seem like it presents almost a $100 value. Of course, you can always wait for it to go on sale and get a better deal, but this one has a lot of playability. You have a nice cockpit, which has a pretty nice design to it in my opinion. It goes very well 
with the Imperial Convey X transport because it can literally lift it up, which is awesome. You can also lift up the included cargo carrier in the set, which is nice as well. You have a great slew of minifigures with Rio, Kira, Val, Dryden's Guard, and another Dryden's Guard. So you get a couple of Dryden Voss Guards, which is awesome. Unfortunately, no Dryden Voss minifigure in any of these sets, which kind of sucks. But you also do have like the underbelly of the Imperial AT Hauler, where we see Han and Chewie kind of talk when they're flying through the skies on the planet, which is pretty awesome. Other than that, though, it's a pretty simple set, white and gray design with a little brown tone to it, which is kind of cool, I guess. But it, it depends on where you are in this set. I'm kind of lukewarm on it right now. I'm sure I'll like it a lot more once I have it and I get to play around with it because I think it's going to be a very nice hand-in-hand -hand set with the Imperial Convey X Transport. Nearing the finish here, we have the 75220 Sandcrawler, 1,239 pieces. I believe this one's going to retail for $140. Has two Jawas, Luke Skywalker, a medical droid, RA7, and R5A2. I'm not too happy about the minifigure selection here. They really could have included more for $140. bucks. i am not a huge fan of what LEGO's been doing recently with these $140 sets where they literally only have six minifigures. Like, that is just bonkers to me. I used to buy $100 sets and they would have 10 minifigures in them, you know? So, like, what's going on here, LEGO? Like, this is pretty crazy that they don't include that many minifigures. I wish they would include more. It really kind of sucks. But the Sandcrawler itself is going to be a neat design. It's obviously a smaller Sandcrawler, I think, than we've ever had. I will be comparing this thing to the other two sand crawlers once I get this one in hand I have the other two now so I'm really excited to kind of take a look and compare but the interior of this thing actually looks like a fun little play area it opens up nicely so you get nice access to it you can put the Jawas in there you can lift up the droid you can do a few different things which is pretty neat it has like a little control center and stuff in there as well you also do have access to the cockpit area of the sand crawler which is nice you can throw a Jawa up there to kind of pilot the sand crawler so nothing wrong with that of course again this is a smaller set so some of the shaping might be a little bit off which is okay overall i'm kind of for this set something i just noticed though is if you look between the treads on the set you can actually see some rubber wheels underneath the sand crawler so this is something that i think could improve the set i think it could make it move a lot better i think that might be the rationale behind having the rubber wheels underneath i remember in the past when i used to play with my other sand crawler those treads don't particularly gain too much traction especially on surfaces like hardwood and with those rubber wheels underneath you're going to be able to get that sand crawler are rolling really easily so I'm kind of excited for that we'll see what happens there but that seems like it's a it's a cool feature maybe and the last set we have for the August release is the 75221 Imperial landing craft with 636 minifigures and five minifigures we have Obi-Wan Kenobi R2-D2 the two heroes in the set and then we have an Imperial shuttle pilot a sand trooper and a sand trooper squad leader my biggest qualm with this set is again for 90 bucks I just feel like they should include a couple more stormtroopers the last Imperial landing craft had four stormtroopers and this one just has too so what gives here I, I know they included a couple of heroes instead but for 90 bucks just throw in a couple more simple sand troopers like why not but anyway the design of this thing kind of takes after the more recent imperial shuttle from 2015 and i'm happy with that i think that is a really good design and i think this one kind of follows well in its footsteps the side panels for this thing open up nicely to give you nice access to the interior where you can place in your sand troopers you have a nice cockpit for your pilot which can sit in there very easily although he's the only minifigure that's going to fit in there so if you kind of have a problem with that, then maybe this set isn't for you. I don't know. You do have a very nice ramp that comes out of the Imperial Landing Craft too, so you can kind of drop the Sand Troopers out of that. That's something that the 2007 model of this set kind of lacked, which is very cool. Of course, the wings can fold up and down, which is kind of typical, and it looks like the design for the fin on the set where you can basically hold it from the center is going to be much sturdier it's probably got a technic connection unlike the 2007 model so it's actually not going to break every time you pick it up which is great good to see that 90 dollars might be a little bit pricey for some people but it's still a cool set from the original trilogy and that's probably going to garner some sales for it if you wait for it to go on sale of course you're getting a much better deal this is definitely one that i would say you don't need to buy right away wait for it to go on sale anyway that is all of the lego star wars sets coming out in august of 2018 i believe the advent calendar comes out in September, so we're not going to take a look at that one here. I don't really care to look at the advent calendar. You guys know how I feel. They don't even include the Santa minifigures anymore. I'm kind of not happy with that, but it's whatever. It's a pretty neat line for the summer of 2018. I'm kind of getting more excited for 2019 now. I'm just not too hyped about these sets. A lot of them do seem overpriced, and I can get behind that. I'm sure that's going to be the kind of main sentiment down in the comment section down below is that a lot of these sets are overpriced, and I agree. Some of them definitely are, and LEGO kind of has a problem where I feel like they're not including enough minifigures for some of the 
more expensive sets now and it's kind of sad to see what's going on there where you have a set that costs 90 bucks with five minifigures and then you have sets that cost upwards of 150 dollars and they only include six minifigures like that's pretty crazy and you know you just wish they would do a little bit more on that end but other than that i'm happy with the general designs of the set barring the imperial conveyance transporter which i kind of feel like they dropped the ball on and the snoke's throne room i think the rest of the sets are very nicely designed and have pretty neat features so kind of looking forward to those anyway if you enjoyed the video hit the like button if you're new to the channel of course please subscribe so you don't miss any of my future lego videos and if you have anything to say leave in the comment section down below let me know what you guys think about the summer 2018 lego star wars line i should have reviews of these sets hopefully coming out in the next couple weeks hopefully i'll be able to get these early so stay tuned for that anyway guys thank you for watching i'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.